In this video, you'll learn how to create a data source for your grid control in code. You'll also see how to apply data attributes to make the grid apply appropriate editing modes, cell editors, and input validation rules. Let's start by creating a project with the DevExpress project wizard, available via the DevExpress templates collection as you create a new solution. Launch the app to see that there's sample data displayed by the grid. Switch to code to locate the source of this data. There's code automatically generated by the wizard, including the init grid method call in the form constructor. This method populates a binding list with five instances of the person class. The binding list object is then assigned to the grid control's data source property. This is how you can create data in code in the simplest case. Define an object representing a record, then create a collection of such objects and assign the collection to the grid's data source property. Now let's see a few more examples of creating data in code and then binding it to the grid. You can define your custom classes that would serve as data records. The sample code file in this video contains definitions of three classes, company public info, company private info, and product, each including its own properties that will serve as data fields. The grid sample data list class defined later in this file provides three methods, get company private info, get company public info, and get product sample. Each of these methods returns a binding list populated with objects of corresponding classes. Now let's create the UI allowing application users to switch between these three data sources. Return to the main form design where you can see the editor added to the ribbon control. The drop-down list will have three items corresponding to the data source types defined earlier. Now handle the edit value changed event to assign different binding list objects to my grid's data source depending on the currently selected drop-down list item. To make sure that grid columns are recreated based on the currently available data fields, handle the data source changed event that fires each time the grid receives a new data source. In the event handler, simply call the populate columns method that does exactly what is needed. Now run the application to see how this works. The application still starts with auto-generated sample data. If you select an item from the drop-down list in the ribbon, the grid will display data from the corresponding data source. Notice that all grid columns are displayed with their default editors and have default formatting applied. For instance, the product info data contains multi-line text that cannot be viewed entirely since the default grid cell editor allows only single-line text. Company public data includes URLs and emails that are displayed as simple text strings, as well as phone numbers that should ideally use a phone mask format. Finally, the private company info displays passwords that should not be immediately visible. One way to change this is by accessing column objects and updating their settings, but that would mean that you should do this every time you bind your data source to a data-aware control. Another way to do this is by using the data annotation attributes provided by Microsoft and supported by most DevExpress data-aware controls. To be able to use these attributes, make sure your application references the system.componentmodel.dataannotations namespace. There are two ways to use these attributes. The first and simplest method is to define required attributes before each data field. This is what's done for the product class. Some attributes indicate data types so that an appropriate cell editor can be assigned. The read-only attribute allows you to disable data editing for a specific field. You can also apply data input validation rules as it's done by the range attribute. Launch the app and switch to the product info data to see how it looks now. The currency column allows only data in the specified range. This approach is most useful when you have unique data fields that are not used in multiple classes. The multi-line text now uses the memo edit cell editor that allows us to view the text entirely. Another way to accomplish the same task is by using the metadata type class attribute. Using this approach, you can define a data field attribute once and then use the definition for multiple classes. It can also improve code readability since data attributes don't have to precede every property definition. 
Both private and public company info classes will use metadata defined by the company product metadata class. Now run the application to see the result. Switch to the public company info data source to see that URLs are now displayed as actual hyperlinks and phone numbers use the masked input.